What is going on everybody? It is Ozzy from Oz Talks Hardware and in this video I will be discussing gaming on Ryzen. Now I did have a Ryzen review previously uploaded but I decided to take it down because I was not a fan of the quality. It actually took me two hours to both record and edit the video and honestly for a review of that nature it should take me a lot more time to finish up the video. But today I want to discuss something very different about Ryzen. As many of you know Ryzen is about 3 to 15 percent slower than a KB Lake CPU in 1080p gaming. Considering that the R7 lineup is geared towards content creators, that's not very surprising, in the least actually. But after the fiasco of the discrepancies between reviewers and review samples, I decided to take a closer look at my test bench and see how some of the components could really affect the R7 chip. What I found to my knowledge is that memory affects it a lot. Now RAM speed affecting processor speed is actually nothing really new. Skylake saw a pretty nice bump in performance when it was paired with faster memory and higher frequencies usually improve minimum frames per second across most architectures. But it seems that Ryzen is slightly dependent on RAM to get to its fullest potential. I received a RAM kit clocked at 2133 MHz out of the box. Unfortunately, I still cannot overclock my RAM manually on my Gigabyte Gaming 5, but I can enable the XMP profile that clocks the RAM to 2933 automatically. I wish I could push the RAM further, but until a new BIOS update is released that affects and improves memory stability, I'm stuck right under 3000 MHz. Fortunately enough, that's all I need to prove my point. So I have an R7-1700 clocked at 4GHz and a Skylake 6700K clocked at 4GHz. The benchmarks you'll see are clock for clock to rid any discrepancies frequency may naturally cause. The i7 uses 2133 MHz RAM for all the games tested, while the R7 will use 2133 and 2933 where specified. I decided to turn off SMT to gauge the SMT issue that presents itself in Windows 10 when using a Ryzen chip. So the games I tested are GTA 5, Far Cry Primal, Hitman, and Battlefield 1. Now I tested all of these games using DirectX 11 and not DirectX 12 simply because I did not have enough time to test out both APIs and work with the results. Now all of the respective settings will be shown on the graphs that will be displayed on screen um, when I get to the benchmarks. Starting off we have GTA 5. At stock memory frequencies the i7 has a 12% increase in performance on average and a 10% bump in the minimums. But increase the memory frequency to 2933 and we see that the 1700 takes a small lead with identical minimums. Turn off SMT and the 1700 pulls a small 4% victory over the i7 6700K. Next up, we have Far Cry Primal. The 1700 and i7-6700K perform within each other's margin of error using 2133 MHz RAM. With the RAM clocked at 2933, the 1700 pulls an extra 6 FPS, giving it a 5 FPS advantage over the i7. Disable SMT and the average and minimum increase by 3 and 5 frames per second respectively. Thirdly, Hitman shows a 15% difference at stock memory clocks between the i7 and R7, with the 6700K taking the lead. Overclock the R7's memory to 2933 and the gap closes to a mere 3% difference. Disable SMT and the two processors are near identical in the game. Lastly, we have Battlefield 1. The R7 is about 7% slower using 2133 MHz RAM and doesn't change much with the 2933 overclock on average. Even with SMT disabled, the performance difference proved negligible. On average, after testing all of the games, the R7-1700 sees about a 9% performance increase going from 2133 to 2933 MHz RAM, nearly bridging the gap between it and the 6700K in heavier open world titles. Now, you must also take into account that the 1700 and its RAM assuming it comes clocked lower than 2933, must be overclocked to reach atypical i7 gaming performance. It's also good to note that the i7 and its RAM can be overclocked to make up the difference. So the biggest question here is why does this happen? Now memory speed does not directly affect core usage or IPC. And just to be sure, I retested Cinebench R15 using 2933 MHz RAM and I got identical test scores as when I used 2133 MHz RAM. On top of that, in GTA 5, I measured core usage across all 16 cores and threads and it was pretty much identical switching from 2133 to 2933 MHz RAM. So with that out of the way, since memory does not affect IPC or how many cores are being used, 
why is the R7 getting faster when you overclock its memory? Well, our friends from PC Perspective, Enantec, and Tech Power Up actually have that answer. It turns out that Ryzen is somewhat dependent on RAM speed. Zen is split into quad core subunits called Core Complexes or CCXs for short. An 8 core Zen processor has two CCXs with all four cores on each enabled. These CCXs share a single memory controller which is connected by Zen's Northbridge or data slash infinity fabric. This means that the memory's frequency can, but may not always, directly affect Ryzen's performance. To put it simply, the faster your memory speed is, the faster your Zen CPU will be, and in certain games such as GTA 5, it will scale very, very well. Apparently, the communication between AMD's core complexes have twice the latency than Intel's, which is why the R7 series could be behind Intel in gaming. A possible way to alleviate the difference is by running faster memory to reduce the latency between the core complexes. The weirdest part is that there's so many memory issues right now on the AM4 platform. Most AM4 motherboards, or at least a lot of the ones that are out right now, support up to 2667 MHz of memory, and although you can overclock it to reach higher clock speeds, those are not officially supported. And sometimes when you overclock it to the 3000s or higher, it just doesn't work. So this begs the question, if Zen is dependent on memory speed for performance, or at least more so than its competition, why are there so many issues right now with memory on the AM4 platform? Why isn't it working as it should? Some food for thought. Hopefully AMD fixes that in the coming months. But what about cast latency? Well, that definitely plays a part too. Unfortunately, I had four exams last week, so I did not have the time to personally test it and see how much it affects Ryzen in comparison to memory speed. Cool enough though, there are some people who have tested it themselves and I will put as many of those tests as I can find in the description, links to those articles down below. So Ryzen and the AM4 platform still have quite a bit of maturing to go through. Now, if you do have an R7 processor, I do recommend overclocking it. Uh, definitely disable SMT for now because it can help in most games. And then make sure that you set an XMP profile for your memory if you can or overclock it as far as you can. Now, if you can't do any of those things or only a few of those things, then don't fret. You still have a really good CPU for gaming and a great one for multimedia editing and rendering and encoding. So yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely leave a like. And if you loved it, definitely subscribe because I have more videos like this coming out soon. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Okay, well, you're just gonna keep autofocusing, aren't you? Yeah, you are. You are. All right, there. Are you done? Are you done autofocusing? You good? Yeah? Yeah? Cool. Can I record now? Is it okay to record? Yeah? Yeah? All right. All right, I'll record. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But what about... Ca okay, well...